Let's see how this algorithm works on the context of triangles. Uh, we will use it to generate concept intents, closed attribute sets. So the first thing we do is we call first closure, and first closure gives us the lactically first closed attribute set. It's the closure of the empty set. Well, in this formal context, the empty set is closed, so our first closure is the empty set. And then we run next closure with the empty set as input. And next closure, we hope, will give us the lactically next closed set after the empty set. So A in our algorithm is empty, and next closure goes through all attributes from E to A and tries to add them to A, to the set A. So we start with E. Um, and we compute, we form the union of the set A, attribute M. In this case, we get the set consisting of one attribute E. And then we compute its closure. This is going to be the set B in our algorithm. Okay, so um, what objects have attribute E? It's T2 and T7, and they don't have anything else in common. So the closure of E is the set E. And the smallest new element in the, in the set is E. So indeed, in this case, the set A is E less th than the set B. The first element in which A and B differ is E. Um, so this is our next closed set, E. We run next closure again, now with E as input. And next closure again starts with the largest attribute and tries to modify the set A. Well, the largest attribute is E, but E is already here. So when the attribute is part of A, the algorithm removes it. And so our A becomes the empty set. The next attribute is D. The closure of D in this formal context is D itself, because of uh, the object T5, which has D and no other attribute. So B equals D. And the smallest new element is D, so this is our next close set, D. At the next run of next closure, A equals D, and we add attribute E. Well, the closure of DE is the set of all attributes, because there's no object here that has both D and E. Um, and the smallest new element in set M is A. So this is the first attribute in which the set A, capital A, and the set capital B differ. Here we have D, here we have A, B, C, D, E. And the first attribute in which they differ is A. So A is uh, greater than E. So we can't say that B is E less than A. So we ignore this iteration of the algorithm. And uh, next closure goes to the next attribute. Well, the next attribute is D. So it removes D from A. And we have the empty set here. The next attribute is C. The closure of C is C. And the smallest new element is C again. Um, so this is our next closed set, C. The algorithm continues with C as A. Uh, the, the largest attribute is E. The closure of CE is M because we have no uh, objects that have both C and A, and the smallest new element is A, so we ignore this. Um, and we go to the next attribute. The next attribute is uh, D. The closure of CD is uh, M, because again there is, no, th there is no object that has C and D together, and we ignore it again. And so, then the next attribute is C. C is removed from A, and we're left with an empty set. And then the next attribute is B. The closure of B is B. 
the smallest new element relative to the empty set is b. And so we've computed the next closed set, which is b. Uh, then the largest element is E. The closure of BE is uh, BE because of the object T2, which has precisely these two attributes, B and E. Uh, the smallest new element is E. So we've computed the next closed set, BE. Then we remove E from BE and we're left with B. And the next attribute is D, so we compute the closure of BD, and BD is closed. Right, BD is closed here. And the smallest new element is D, so uh, this is our next closed set, BD. Um, now, a equals to BD, and we add the new element, the largest element, E. But there's no object that has all the three attributes BDE, so the closure of BDE is M, the smallest new element is A, and A is greater than E. So we don't need this closed set yet. Go to the next attribute. The next attribute is D, so it's removed from our set A, which becomes B. And the next attribute is C. So the closure of BC is BC itself. Uh, the smallest new element is C. Everything is fine. So BC is our next closed set. Um, well then we add E. But the closure of BCE is M, so we ignore it. Then we add D. But the closure of BCD is again M, so the smallest new element is A, and we ignore it again. Then we remove C, and we remove B, and we are left with the empty set. And the largest element that remains is A. Okay. So, the closure of A in this formal context is ABC, because there's only one object, T4, that has attribute A, and it also has B and C. So the closure of A is uh, A, B, C, and here the smallest new element is A, relative to the empty set. It's A. Okay, so this is our next closed set, A, B, C. And we continue with it as A, as capital A. Um, so the next, the largest attribute is E. The closure of A, B, C, E is M. And the smallest new element here is D, which is less than E, so we ignore it. And instead we go to the next attribute, which is D. Now the closure of A, B, C, D is M again, but now the smallest new element is D relative to ABC. So this is the right time for M to be generated. ABC is indeed D less than M. So this is our next closed set, and actually this is our last closed set, because We've computed the lactically largest closed set. It has all the attributes. The algorithm stops. It may look as if we simply go through all subsets of M and compute closures for each of them, like we do in the naive algorithm. But this is not true. This is not the case. For instance, we never considered the closure of CDE. Once we recognize that CDE is no good, we proceeded immediately with the set B. And uh, in large formal contexts, where we have lots of closed elements and lots of subsets, this can really make things more efficient.